This is Mrs. Wainwright's math class, Chapter 5, Lesson 1, Dividing by Powers of 10, and we'll include some algebra. Today's learning target, by the end of the lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I can use patterns with powers of 10 to place the decimal in a division problem. As we know, division is the opposite of multiplication. And in this lesson, we need to remember that, because we need to remember that when we divide by a power of 10, we'll need to move the decimal the opposite way that we would if we multiplied by a power of 10. So division is the opposite of multiplication. So when we divide by a power of 10, we move the decimal the opposite way we would if we multiplied by a power of 10. In example number one, we're going to compare some multiplication problems to some division problems. So if I have the multiplication problem 56 times 1, well, anything times 1 equals itself. So the answer would be 56. If I have the division problem 56 divided by 1, well, anything divided by 1 equals itself. So 56 divided by 1 also equals 56. But what if I had the multiplication problem 56 times 10? Well, I know that 10 is a power of 10 number. It's a 1 with zeros. 10 is greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right. And there's one zero, so I move it one place to the right. So I would take my other number, which is the 56, remove the invisibility cloak, cross out the decimal, and move it one place to the right. In this case, I had to add a place value zero. So 56 times 10 equals 560. But what if we had the problem 56 divided by 10? What would we do to solve that? Well, I start the same way I would for multiplication, because I'm so used to doing that. I've done it in chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I say, oh, 10 is a power of 10 number. It has a 1 with zeros. And 10 is greater than 1, which means I move my decimal to the right. It has one zero, so I move it to the right one place. But then I go back and focus on my operation, and it's not multiplication, it's division. Division is the opposite of multiplication, therefore I'm going to move my decimal in the opposite direction. So I'm not going to move it to the right, I'll move it the opposite way, which is to the left. So I need to move my decimal to the left one place. So we rewrite my other number, 56, remove the invisibility cloak, cross out the decimal, and I move it to the left one place. So 56 divided by 10 is 5 and 6 tenths. And if you think about it, that is logical. It does make sense. 56 times 10, multiplication of a whole number will give me a larger number, equals 560. But 56 divided by 10, division will give me a smaller answer, which is 5 and 6 tenths. Let's try another one. If I have the problem 56 times 100, well, I see 100 is a power of 10 number. It's a 1 with zeros. I know 100 is greater than 1, which means I move my decimal to the right two places because there's two zeros. So I write by 56, remove the invisibility cloak to find the decimal, cross out the decimal, I'll move it one, two places to the right. Of course, when I move, if there's no digit to move around, I need to add a place value zero first. So 56 times 100 equals 5,600. But what if I had 56 divided by 100? Again, I'm going to look at it in the same way. I'm going to say 100 is a power of 10 number. It's greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right. 2, 0, so I move it to the right two places. But now I focus in on the operation, which is not multiplication, it's division. Division is the opposite of multiplication, so I need to move my decimal in the opposite direction. Therefore, I won't be moving it to the right, I'll be moving it to the left two places. So write down my 56, remove the invisibility cloak to find my decimal, cross it out, and we'll move it one, two places to the left. So 56 divided by 100 equals 0 and 56 hundredths. Let's try another one. 56 times 1,000. Well, I know that. 1,000 is greater than 1. I'll move my decimal to the right three places. It's multiplication, so I keep it to the right. Write down the 56. Remove the invisibility cloak to find the decimal. 
I'm going to be moving my decimal three places to the right to cross it out and move it once. Add another zero to move it twice. Add another zero to move it three places to the right. So 56 times 1,000 is 56,000. But again, what happens if we divided 56 divided by 1,000? Follow the same format. 1,000 is a power of 10 number. It's greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right three places because there's three zeros. But this isn't multiplication. It's the opposite of multiplication. It's division. And so for division, I need to move my decimal in the opposite direction, which means I move it to the left three places. So write down my 56. Remove the invisibility cloak to find the decimal, and I will move it 1, 2, add a place value 0, and 3 places to the left. So 56 divided by 1,000 equals 56 thousandths. So basically, division is the opposite of multiplication. I do the same thing, except I move my decimal in the opposite direction. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 1 right now. In example number two, we'll compare multiplication and division with base 10 numbers and exponents. So let's look at this multiplication problem. 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the 0 power. Well, I know that 10 to the 0 power is a 1 with no zeros, so that equals 1. And anything times 1 is itself, so my answer will stay at 23 and 7 tenths. But if I had the division problem, 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the 0 power. Well, again, 10 to the 0 power is a 1 with no zeros. So that's equivalent to 1. And anything divided by 1 is itself, so that stays the same at 23 and 7 tenths. What if I had the multiplication problem 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the first power? Well, I know 10 to the first power is greater than 1 because it's a 1 with 1 zero, which basically means that it's 10, and that's greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right. My exponent is 1, so it moves one place to the right. So I write down my number, 23 and 7 tenths. There's already a decimal there, so I simply need to cross it out and move it one place to the right. 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the first equals 237. But what if I didn't multiply it and divide it? 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the first power. I'm going to go with the same philosophy that I've done all of my chapters. 10 to the first power is greater than 1. That means I move my decimal to the right one place. What's different here is that it's the division problem, so I have to go in the opposite direction. It will no longer be the right. I'll move it to the left since it's a division problem. So I'll write down my 23 and 7 tenths. There's already a decimal, so I cross it out, and I move it one place to the left. 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the first power equals 2 and 37 hundredths. My next multiplication problem, 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the second power. Well, 10 to the second power is greater than 1. I'll move my decimal two places since my exponent is a 2. Write down my starting number, which is 23.7. It already has a decimal, so we'll cross it out and move it one place. Put a place value zero, so we can now move it that second place to the right. So 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the second equals 2,370. But what's 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the second power? Well, think of the same philosophy. 10 to the second power is greater than 1, means I move my decimal to the right. My exponent is 2, so I'll go two places. Double check my operation, and this is division. Division is the opposite of multiplication, so I'll have to move my decimal in the opposite direction, which means I'll move it to the left. Take my given number of 23.7, cross out the decimal, and move it one, two places to the left. So 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the second power equals 0 and 237 thousandths. And let's look at the last comparison. If I have 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the third power, well, 10 to the third power is greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right three places since my exponent is 3. Write down my 23.7. 
I'm going to cross out the decimal and move it three places to the right. One at a place value zero, so I can move it two places, at another place value zero, so I can move it three places. So 23 and 7 tenths times 10 to the third power is 23,700. But if I had 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the third power, again, think the same philosophy, 10 to the third is greater than 1, means I move my decimal to the right three places since my exponent is 3. But this is not multiplication, it's division. Division is the opposite of multiplication, so I have to move my decimal in the opposite direction, which will be the left. Write down my 23.7, cross out my decimal, and I'll move it 1, 2, put a place value 0 so I can move it 3 places to the left. So 23 and 7 tenths divided by 10 to the third power equals 0 and 237 ten thousandths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 2 right now. Example number three is a word problem that you might see. My friend Danny owns a bakery called Danny Cakes, so I used his bakery for my example. Danny Cakes Bakery uses 440 pounds of flour to make 1,000 loaves of bread. Each loaf contains the same amount of flour. How many pounds of flour are used in each loaf of bread? A word problem, first thing I do is focus in and see what the question is asking me. It wants to know how many pounds of flour are used in each loaf of bread. So I want the amount of flour for each separate individual loaf. What do I know? Let's see. I know that they use 440 pounds of flour to make 1,000 loaves. And I know that each loaf contains the same amount of flour. 440 pounds is my total amount of flour. So therefore, when I'm starting with my total and breaking it up to find how much each separate individual loaf is, that's going to be a division problem. So I'll take my total amount of flour, which is 440 pounds, divided by the number of loaves it makes, which is 1,000. 440 divided by 1,000. Well, I see that 1,000 is a power of 10 number. It's a 1 with zeros. And 1,000 is greater than 1, which means I move my decimal to the right. There are three zeros, so I move it three places to the right. But check the operation. I see that it's a division problem. Division is the opposite of multiplication, so I have to move my decimal in the opposite direction. Instead of moving it to the right, I'll move it to the left to those three places. So I write down my 440. I do not see a decimal, so I must remove the invisibility cloak to find the decimal. We know it's always at the end. And now I can move my decimal three places to the left. Cross it out, move it one, two, three places to the left. Are there any unnecessary zeros in this number? Yes, I see that this ending zero is an unnecessary zero. This is a word problem, so my answer needs to have a unit. The question says, how many pounds of flour are used in each loaf? Well, I know Mrs. Wainer won't be happy if I start my number with a decimal, so I will write zero, decimal, four, four which is zero and forty-four hundredths pounds of flour are used in each loaf. And that's my final answer. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number three right now. Number four is a type of algebra problem you might see. Thirty-nine divided by n equals zero and thirty-nine hundredths. Well, how do I solve an algebra problem? I see divided by n, so I'll circle that. I'm going to move it to the other side and write the opposite operation since I'm moving it to the opposite side. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So I'll say times n. So now I have 39 equals 0 and 39 hundredths times n. Hmm, how will I solve this? Well, I know that somehow I need to turn this 0 and 39 hundredths into this 39 question is, how will I do that? Well, let's check it out. Let's write down 0 and 39 hundredths. And what do I need to do to this number to make it into a 39? Well, I think I'll need to move my decimal to the right. So let's cross out the decimal and move it step by step to the right. I'll move it two places to the right and bring it right down here so I've now turned it into 39. What did I do? I moved it one, two places to the right. So what could I multiply to move my decimal two places to the right? 
Well, I know that anything times 100 would have me move my decimal to the right two places. So I could say n is 100. Or there's another correct answer as well. I know if I multiply anything times 10 to the second power, that means I'll be moving my decimal two places to the right. So n can equal 100, or n can equal 10 to the second power. Either answer would be correct. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number four right now. Example number five is also an algebra problem, but the variable, the unknown letter, is in a different spot, so it's important we see how to solve this problem. I have n divided by 10 to the third equals 0 and 38 hundredths. Well, I know for algebra, I can take what's on this side, the operation and the number, divided by 10 to the third power, and if I put it on the opposite side of the equal sign, I change it to the opposite operation. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. Let's cross it out and say times 10 to the third power. Well, actually, I think I like this kind of problem better because now I know exactly what I need to do to solve it. 0 times 38 hundredths times 10 to the third. 10 to the third power is greater than 1, means I move my decimal to the right three places since my exponent is 3. So I'll take my given number of 0 0.38, cross out the decimal, I'll move it 1, 2, up, oh, I need a place value 0 so I can move it three places to the right. So now I can say that n equals, well, are there any unnecessary zeros? Yes, this is a whole number and a whole number. The first zeros, the starting zeros, are unnecessary. So n equals 380. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 5 right now. Let's review. Division is the opposite of multiplication, so when we divide by a power of 10, we need to move the decimal the opposite way we would if we multiplied by a power of 10. So when I multiplied, if I was moving my decimal to the right, if I divided instead, I'd be moving my decimal to the left. I like to think it out first the way we've learned all year with multiplication, because we learned it and practiced it in chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when I look at my power of 10 number, like this 1,000, I say what I've always said, which is this is greater than 1, so I move my decimal to the right three places because of three zeros. But then I focus in and double check my operation, and when I see that it's not multiplication, it's the opposite and division, I cross out my direction and change it to the opposite direction. In this case, I change it to move my decimal to the left. Remember, in algebra, you want to capture the operation and the number or variable that's next to it. Circle it, cross it out, and when I move it to the opposite side of the equal sign, I change it to the opposite operation. Once I have it there, I can then figure out what the value of that unknown letter or that variable is. Hopefully you can confidently say I can use patterns with powers of 10 to place the decimal in a division problem. Remember, we will be doing more practice in class. If you have difficulty during that time, please see a teacher, and we will help you. Good luck with the lesson.